Hi everybody. We had a problem with our PlayStation 2. Uh, one of the controllers was not working. Uh, so first of all we had to check whether both controllers are fine. So we swapped out from the second controller port to the first controller port with uh, both controllers and they were both working fine. So we uh, knew it had to be the controller port. So we had to open up our PlayStation to see what's wrong with it and uh, on the bottom you have to put it upside down on the bottom there are four rubber pins and two plastic pins that we had to take out to get to the screws and after done that we used just a basic Phillips screwdriver and unscrewed all six of our uh, necessary screws to be able afterwards to open up the case Okay, as you can see there are a couple of short ones and a couple of long ones. Uh, it depends on what version you got, where they're at. Okay. After you have uh, taken out all six screws that are necessary, you can pop out the metal of uh, the plastic case of the PlayStation. Uh, you have a metal plate which is covering the inside. In our case, there was only one screw on it, so we had to pop out that. We were able to take the metal plate off. And uh, below there, we've seen the cable on the front here, which connects the board of the PlayStation 2 to the two controller ports. And uh, it's an easy clip on system, so you just Clip it off and take the ribbon cable out. And uh, after we've done that, we've seen a damage at the very front of the cable. Uh, there was a cut from the one side up until the middle, so it was pretty logic that only one controller was working, one controller port, because the other half of the cable was damaged. So in our case, we were pretty lucky because the damage of the cable was in the very back end of the cable. So all we had to do was take a pair of scissors and cut off just about well, a quarter inch, not more than that. Uh, which was very good because in our case our cable was really, really short and it had been a problem if the damage had been uh, in the middle of the cable, for example. We wouldn't have a uh, chance to fix it. But in our case we got lucky, so we cut it off. And after that we used a razor blade or a cutter blade, you can use pretty much everything similar to that, and just carefully grind off the very tip of it to have the contact back clean because the cable as it is is isolated of course. And uh, after we have done that and all the contacts were clean and everything, it looked just pretty much similar to the original end of it. And uh, after we've done that, we can pop the cable back in into the uh, one side of the card of the controller port and, of course, on the board. At first, we had the problem. We tried it out and it didn't work. Neither one of the controls were working. So we opened up the system and had it running open and we pressed down the cable onto the contact and it was working fine. So our problem was that the cable was now a little bit too thin on the very end. So all we did is uh, just use the basic duct tape and tape it around there a little bit, the clear duct tape type, uh, so it gains a little bit more thickness of the cable. Uh, but make sure, of course, that you do not uh, cover the contact that we just grinded off. After we've done that, we put the system back together. Put back the plastic cover. What we do now is we pop just two screws in to make sure everything is fixed and everything. So we can show you on the television that the system is working for both control ports now. Okay. Okay, there you go. Burnout is running.
okay, the Versus game is working. Uh, when the Control War port was broken, we didn't even have the chance to go into multiplayer game. Well, it's working now. Top one is running fine. And also the bottom one is driving perfect. Okay, so that was a quick tutorial on how to fix your control port cable on the PlayStation 2. Uh, thanks everybody for watching.